Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? In today's video we are going to take a look at turning this very very standard box camp that I'm sure you guys have seen many times before into this which is something considerably more substantial and much more of a permanent home so hopefully you guys will find this useful So here we are, first things first, we're going to take a little look at the map and show where we are. So this is the camp just here. We are just south of Kanawha County Nuka Cola Park. Plant rather. There's Camden Park. We are just south of that little river there. See uh, Chelsea over this way. And you have to be a little bit further away from the road here. You push your camp unit a little bit further back because uh, otherwise the presence of the Nuka Cola plant will interfere. But first up, turning this box camp into something much much more interesting. So first thing we could do is pull down most of this place, to be honest, and then we've got a simple foundation to start on. So as you may have noticed, this video is a little bit longer than I would usually go for for a camp build. And the idea is because not only do I want to show you how I did this, but I also want to talk through what I was thinking at the time, the sort of mindset behind the build. So that way, if you want to follow along with this and do something similar, you can do. But you should also be able to apply the principles to any other build you happen to work on and hopefully come up with something very, very cool. So hopefully it will be more than just this one camp this will be useful for. So, we're nearly there now. I'm just going to get this down to a 2x2 two two first. It's a simple little starting point, and this is going to be the core room of our structure that we're going to build out from. So, one of the big principles behind this, and the one we're going to be looking at a lot through this, is breaking up flat surfaces and standard box shapes. So we're going to try and make things a little different and a little more unusual to look at. So. That one floor piece on the edge there is going to be where we have our front door. And we'll get a few walls in. And we're going to move quickly on to putting the upper floor in. So I'm doing this early because I want the upper floor to be towards the back but not the front of the build. And doing it early allows us to sort of build out from a different point rather than just the foundations and sort of use this as a focal point. That way we're not just using the same basic structure, getting sort of outside the box. <laughs> So I've put those four pieces on at the front there, it's a little too far, I actually don't want a floor over this front row of foundations, so we're going to stop there, and we'll sort of be able to look down on the lower floor, but uh, as you'll see when the decoration phase comes around, which I'm also going to show you some of, that uh, actually you can't see that much, but uh, the thoughts there, and uh, you'll see the effect in a moment. So the place is still very small, as I say, one of my most common recommendations for making an interesting looking camp is to build small and decorate a lot. So we're going to keep with that idea. We're also going to end up with something that is a reasonably decent size for a permanent home. So here again, we're pushing out beyond the core box of the structure and have it sticking out of the back. Don't worry about the staircase disappearing. It is still there. It's just occasionally these things happen. You have to serve up to get it to reappear. If you try and place anything in its place, it will prevent it because the game still thinks it's there, even though it's not showing it. But there we go. So a few walls on the top here. The section in the back corner, I was thinking of putting a kind of tower in there, but we're going to change that out in a bit. So we'll make it a bit more interesting than that. But speaking of making things interesting, this front section, we're going to have a lower roof on, and I'm going to use these angled ones rather than having it flat to, again, break up that simple structure. Make it a bit more interesting to look at. Pop upstairs again. And coming further towards the back, we're going to mix up the shapes, mix up the angles, and try and make things a bit more interesting. So. First thing I wanted to do here was continue the slope a little further, at least here over the stairs, so we've got a bit of headroom. Actually didn't work out in the end, but one of the things I should say there is that there are quite a lot of occasions here where you're going to see me do something and change my mind, which is... I realise the touch was repetitive, but at the same time it's kind of integral to breaking up the shape and making the thing look more interesting, so that's why I've chosen to show it. So here we've got that little flat roof on, just to use, again, a different shape, and we're going to use a full-sized wall at the top there. We're actually going to change that flat one out later on, because, again, it's flat, it doesn't look that great. But for now it'll do. We'll get this missing wall put in, and put the roof over this side. Now at the back, we're going to come at it from the other angle again, to make things a bit more interesting. We're going to put a tower top on there, the little, um, I don't know, minaret? I don't know what you call that, either way, on the top there, just to make that look a little more interesting. actually don't like it, so I'll change it in a bit, but... Here... The idea was to have that little step up to, again, break the line of the roof up a bit. But despite having a piece that is designed to go in a gap of this shape, for some reason this won't snap, so a new plan was required. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I tried various things, but I couldn't get it to work, so 
new plan was called for. So we'll pull this back out again, and we'll put a little step up here on top of this sloped roof. Put a full-size wall in there, and just snap the roof back in here. Now that works, because those triangles we can fill up quite nicely. So I'll be making a lot of changes as we go along to this roof, but for a start, this is already much more interesting than a simple roof that continues along the same line. It's got multiple tiers, it uses different angles. Much, much more interesting to look at, which is what we're going for here. Put a little railing on here so we don't fall off. Sadly, it's not enough to keep me from falling off, but there we go. <laughs> we'll plug up the last couple of gaps. And what we've got here is a basic structure. So we're going to make a number of changes to the actual shape and the look of the thing, but this is the core that we're going to go for, and we're going to be working off of. I'm going to need a little post in the middle here, because I don't like the fact that this section of floor that sticks out is unsupported. But we'll use that half floor, offset it slightly, so we can use it to force the post onto the corner of the floor above. So without that, it will just snap part way along the side, which doesn't look particularly great. So I'm going to change this part wall out for a window. Again, break up what it would otherwise be a very flat surface. I'll swing out and have a look. You can see we've already got an interesting shape. Needs a little bit more work, though. Now, out here, got a nice zigzag back to it, but it definitely needs something to complete it. And we're also going to need an area for our crafting benches, because inside we haven't really got a lot of room for that. So we're going to put a little kind of balcony, veranda, porch thingamajig out here. Put a few foundations in. And I'm going to fence this off, which is going to stop it looking too square. You can see already it's following the lines and making it more square. But because we're not using walls, it will look like a separate outside area rather than having it enclosed. So it breaks up those surfaces again, as I say, and keeps the thing looking a bit more interesting. Couple of railings on that. More. I did want to put a gate on here, but you know how that goes. The game doesn't like you putting gates on foundations. So we'll have a gap instead with some stairs. That'll do for now. We'll come back to that in a bit. And we're going to swing to the opposite corner, diagonally opposite, and put a little garden on this side. But again, it's going to use the existing structure to outline it, but being open will not create too much of a box. So I faffed with this for a while, so we're going to skip over that. We've got a doorway in here that's coming out of what will be the living room, or the staircase. And I couldn't snap next to it because the fence was too close, so we'll play it out start again. Follow it round, use a couple of corners. That's close. Need to tweak it a little bit. Readjust this a little bit. Yeah, man. There we go. And now that should follow it round. Create a nice little enclosed kitchen garden type deal. <laughs> Sorted. We can put the crops in later. So, back out to the front. Once again, this lower floor has a very flat front surface. Even if we put stairs on it, that won't change much. So... A little porch balcony out here will break that up a bit. Because of that fence, I can't go all the way across, but that's actually kind of a good thing. Because otherwise, again, it still goes all the way across, it's flat, it doesn't change the angles very much. Here I had wanted to put a roof on this, but one of the things I wanted to keep in mind for building this was avoiding, at least for the structure, any atomic chop items or anything that um, perhaps newer players might not have access to. We use some in the decoration phase, but um, you'd want to do that your own way anyway to kind of customise it, make it your own. So, rather than using the contemporary set, we're just going to skip over having a roof, because I don't want to put a wall on there to support it, and just have a little fenced off balcony, I suppose. But as you can see, it already breaks up that front surface a little more again, and it's a bit more interesting. Let's get rid of this roof that I don't like very much, and just put a cap piece on here. Make it a little taller first, so it still has that tower vibe. As I say, I'm going to change my mind on this entirely later, but uh, for now, there we go. Close that gap up again. Got to find the right piece first. There we go. And we are making progress. And already we have something that is pretty interesting, much more dynamic to look at. Again, got that flat roof on the top that I'm going to replace with a cap now, because... It just looks kind of unfinished, because you can't see the roof at all. So we'll get that one in there. Pop out and take another look at it. That's better. So, still a few changes I want to make to this, though. Make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to come around the back. Once again, we have another big flat surface that I want to break up. So we're going to pull these walls out. And we'll actually end up extending this balcony along the back, and having the upper floor overhang. But... Uh, a little playing around with it was required to figure that out first, so stick the foundations in, 
get the upper floor on and I find the right pieces. There we go. Come on, cooperate. Go with please. There we go. Nice. And I'm going to line the floor pieces up because we'll be changing these out for different textured floor pieces, which is not necessary to do, but it makes it look more interesting in the decoration phase. And they match up better if you make sure everything's facing the same direction. So for this upper area, it's going to become a bedroom. So I've gone away from the tower idea now. So we're going to make this a little bigger so we've got space for larger furniture like beds. But on the lower floor, I don't want to do that because I want to keep the shape a little bit more interesting. So I spent quite a long time here messing around with the roof, trying to come up with something that would both work and was a bit interesting. So a lot of things didn't. So we're going to jump to what actually did. <laughs> Hence the uh, little jump cut there. But the idea here is to have the roof running at the opposite angle to the roof at the front. So we're going across rather than from to back. Now here I still encountered a few issues with plugging gaps up. Didn't quite like the way this piece sticks down either. So we're going to put a cap piece on here, which I'll actually again change in a moment. That's still a little too low because of the slope on the other pieces, so we'll pop it up one and fill these gaps in. There we go, half walls. Now that does work, but as I say, that sloped roof just to our right here kind of cuts into the space of the room and it's fine, but the sort of alcove above it, I'm not really a fan of. So we're going to pull this out again and we're going to go for another cap, which showed me that I didn't quite like having two separate caps, so we're going to have a single roof that runs across. Swap those out now, make it look like a homogenous piece that again changes up the angles. So here's one of the other style of cap pieces. Swap it out for one that's open on one end. Much them over, and there we go. Much better. Now, what it's something I did during the decoration phase that I didn't manage to show was that that corner I ended up changing out for a corner roof piece rather than the one that I've just put in. And I did that because there's way too much wall to decorate. It just didn't look right. But we'll get to that later. For now, we're downstairs and what will be the kitchen. Uh, as I so said, I want the balcony to run across the back because having this as the same size as the room above is just too big, not very interesting, and a little too uniform. And as you come around the outside here, running the balcony underneath also makes it more open and changes the shape of the outside of the building. So we need some posts here to support this upper floor. So again, we're going to use the half floor so that we can force the pillars onto the corners of both the foundations and the floor above. Doing that for two reasons. One, it looks better. And two, if you don't, and you have it there where it's trying to snap, you won't actually be able to put these fences on the side. The posts will prevent you from doing that. But if they're on the corners, you can snap them in just fine. And there we are. We have a much larger balcony area. Now we're going to take this corner one off because it's a little too big. And that's a much more interesting shape. Now I've puffed around with this for a while to persuade it to actually work. It's quite low to the ground here. And that's what actually worked, which is why I went with that. But it looks pretty good. We've effectively got two sections to this, which is cool. Now we're going to need a little back door to get into the kitchen. There we go. And our structure is more or less the way we want it. However, we're going to change that flat surface there to be a bit more interesting. And using one material here is fine, but not vastly interesting. So we can break this up by mixing the textures, making it much, much more interesting to look at. So I'm going to pull out all the walls on the ground floor now and replace them with brick textures. Again, we're avoiding atomic shop items here, just for the main structure at least. This is one you can pick up. Gram is one of the easiest places, and it's also worth looking at players' camps for plans in general as well. You can usually pick up a bargain that way, including saving yourself thousands of caps on building materials, or building textures might be a better way of putting it. So I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting this door to go in for some bizarre reason, so we'll take everything off, get the walls in, and then we can put them back again. So the idea here is to have the smaller pieces be wooden and all the larger pieces be brick. So I'm going to change this out on the lower floor. I also continued it round on the upper floor and did the same thing, made the larger pieces brick and the smaller ones stone. In hindsight, as we'll see in a moment, I should probably have not done this, the brick walls on the upper floor. It doesn't really matter, but I think it would have looked better if I hadn't. But 
<laughs> hindsight's 2020, so this sort of stage we're at now is where I think I should probably have left it, but I didn't. However, it does still look cool with what we go for, so let's jump onto that. Same principle. And you can see we've changed the upper floor's larger pieces for stone as well. For brick, rather. And we just have the smaller pieces, with the exception of that window, which is fine because it works <laughs> as wood. So mixed textures to make things a bit more interesting to look at. And down here, again, still want to break up the shape just a little bit more. So we're going to put a balcony on this back corner. Not going to run it all the way around. We're going to go around the corner here. We're going to get a couple of railings on the side here. I'm going to find the ones that will snap. There we go. I'm using these ones rather than the ones down below because A, it's different, and B, these small pieces will go on the ends, which the larger ones don't have that option for. So, I'm going to take this corner off again because, once again, it's floating and I don't like that very much. So, back over to the stair tab, once we've put these floors on, and we'll put some posts in. Again, using the floors to make sure it snaps to the corner. So here, I have made a tiny little error. And that is, I've got the floor piece on the front edge rather than the side, so you look at the post you can see they this one here is the wrong way around so there we go put it around the edge and now it matches the posts we've got below it's a little detail but it gives it more it makes it look better <laughs> i don't know what the word i'm looking for is there but it does look better you've got more facing the same general direction do this last one here there we go they all match there's a time and place to have things being different and there's a time and place to have things matching i suppose so we'll dodge the pair of ghoul and then put a half size post underneath to make sure they connect to the ground. Nice, we have it supported, and that is our structure. So, normally I skip over the decoration phase because you guys can decorate any way you like. But for this one, I want to show a little bit more detail of how I'm thinking about it and what I'm doing. So, we're going to have a look at at least some of the decoration quickly here. So first things first, we're going to wallpaper. This section here is going to be our kitchen. So, we want something appropriate to that. These are atomic shot items, these wallpapers, so not everybody's going to have them available. But they do come and go, so worth keeping an eye out for it. Because it adds a great deal of uh, interest and uniqueness to a camp that makes it feel a lot more finished as well. So if you get the chance to pick them up, I would strongly recommend it. So we'll get a little bit of furniture in here. We're going to use a cooking stove. Again, this particular texture is atomic shot, but the stove itself is not. We need a little worktop. So as we don't have one available, I'm going to use a stash box. Unfortunately, nothing will quite fit in this gap, which is a bit of a pity, but uh, close enough for the moment. We'll tweak it in a bit. So, next, I want some appliances. What are we going to do next? We're going to put a table in first, so let's sit down and eat. Nice rustic table. Do you like that one? Tried that, but wasn't quite happy with it in the end, because we're going to put a sink in. That doesn't really work on the end there. We put this flat there, got a bit more room to get between them looks much better so on to the living room so here we're going to try a few different wallpapers I settled on this mothman one in the end finding something that wasn't too dark was the challenge here um, some of the lighter ones don't look great either which is unfortunate but I quite like this mothman one it's a nice balance we have a nice wood floor here nice and homely there we go so next thing I'm going to do get some rugs down break up the texture of that floor a little bit once again <laughs> and then at this point if i had any sense i'd be putting the curtains in unfortunately i don't and i didn't remember to do that until later but you'll see why in just a moment it's good to do that first and the curtains again are an atomic shop item that come and go and i strongly strongly recommend grabbing them if you get a chance so make a huge difference to how finished your camp will look in the end so very worthwhile thing to pick up if you get the opportunity the other principle behind the way I approach decorating is to have separate areas with specific functions. So we've got a sitting room area here, we've got a kitchen at the back, we'll have a crafting area, bedroom, so on and so forth. I realise that sounds very obvious, but it's a useful thing to keep in mind when you're decorating, because you end up with a more complete and homogenous finished look to the place. It looks more believable. So, at the risk of pointing out slightly obvious things, I thought that was worth mentioning. Stick a rug in there. I would like to have something more on the floor here, but once we get the furniture in, you'll see it actually looks fine anyway. So, little radio on the top there. It's a good idea, if possible, to cluster objects together, usually in sort of odd numbers, threes and the like, because it just makes the place look a little bit more complete and alive, and 
looks better to have odd numbers and even numbers, yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> so here we're going to nudge those around. I did like having that chair on a bit of an angle, but there's not really quite as much room as I would like to get through there. Plus, I wanted this table on the end. So we're making some progress. We've got a few big gaps that I need to fill up a bit here, make them a little more interesting. So plant in the corners, good move. Speaking of plants, we're going to go on to some of these potted plants. There's a splash of colour and a little bit more life to the place. This one doesn't work, so we'll move it. <laughs> Looks daft there. There we go, that's much better. Never really had any intention of using the first night decorations in this particular build, but uh, <laughs> fun to look at on this. There we go, I remember the curtains. No, look, I can't put them in because there's furniture in the way. So these do snap nicely over the windows, as you can see there. Even more nicely if you remember to do it before you put the furniture in. But there we go. Fast as you like. We have curtains. Now, I messed around with this particular plant just a bit because I wasn't quite happy with the look. It sticks out too much. It just doesn't quite work. Next up, we're going to put a few more bits of wall decoration on. Just again, break up those blank surfaces. Felt this glow-in-the-dark map would look a little better in the kitchen than in the lounge. I really like these lighted posters. So I particularly prefer these ones that you don't need to connect a wire directly to. The other ones you do, so these are a good bet. The Nuka-Cola ones contrast quite nicely with the wall here, which is why I've gone for those. Plus, you know, I like my Nuka-Cola posters. <laughs> Jumping back into the kitchen for the walls here. Got to have a kitchen clock. Reminds me, got a cuckoo clock available. That's got to go in the lounge. And that would be the best place for it, so we'll move this little um, fire breathers wall decoration. Hard to find a home for that, but uh, that'll do for now. Things are starting to come together. Need a bit of furniture for the table here, need somewhere to sit. Now if you push the chairs as close as possible to the table, you might get some funny animations when you stand back up. But you've got a bit more room to get around and they look a bit more natural. So, that's what we're going for there. So onto the bedroom and what will become the office. So I'm going to separate these two areas out by using different floor textures. I'm not a big fan of that orange shag carpet, but I wanted carpet in the bedroom. It looks better than the plain floor, plus it's a bit different to what we've used elsewhere. So we'll make do with it and we'll break up the surface a little bit more to hide some of the um, ropey texture on that. Brand new glow in the dark wallpaper there that's come from the legendary run, the new season pass, but it looks a bit childish for this particular build, so we're going to go for the wooden panelling, which I like the look of a bit more. And we'll do something a little different over here in what will become the office. We're going to go for the brick wallpaper. Try a few things, see what I like. This window here, for some weird reason, these wooden windows, I can't wallpaper, and I don't know why. It's just a bit of a bug with the system there. But if you switch it to an ordinary wall and then swap it out to a window again, as you can see, it works fine. I've got one up there to do, that one above the Mothman needs to go Mothman, there we go, much better. So, I should have put the rugs down now, but I didn't think of it, so I'll have to move stuff in a moment, but that does break up the big flat open areas of floor. Again, it's all about mixing up those textures a bit and trying to break up the lines. Put another display stand in there, bobblehead stand as well, magazine rack in the corner, and realise I need some floor decoration. <laughs> So this Grognak rug that I've been using was an Atomic Shop item as well. Well worth picking up if you get the chance, because it's the best looking rug in the game at the moment, in my humble opinion. Hopefully we'll get a few more options in this vein, because the other ones that are available are not great. They're better if you've got... If you need something to break up the surface, they'll do. They're better than nothing, is what I'm going for there. Get the curtains in while I remember. That one doesn't look great, so we won't put one on that window. That one up there. And we're going to go for the long curtains in the office again, just to differentiate it a little bit. Yep. Sorted. And I left that window at the top without a curtain as well, because it seems a little ridiculous to have them all that high. Drop a chair in there, and we'll move on to the bedroom. So, this bed kind of fits in with the decor a bit more, in my opinion. The contrast is quite nice. Pity doesn't have any bedding, but we might do. Get a couple of bedside tables in there. Again, I would like something that matches the bed rather than the walls, but got to work with what we have available. 
we've got a big open space in this corner here, so I want something, some kind of function to the area, hence the chaise here, so that we can chill out and read a magazine or something. Mess around with it. I don't want anything too tall because of the windows there. They're providing enough height on their own. Made an exception with the display case around the corner, but generally I try and avoid blocking off windows. There we go. Little plant in here. I'm actually going to move these either side of the stairs, which does look slightly odd, but it also stops you falling down the gap in the stairs, which I did several times in building this, so always a bonus to avoid that. I want to make sure it doesn't stick through the wall there either. There we go. And we need a little bit of storage. So as I said earlier, I actually did this off camera, but if you have a look in the corner to the top left of the bed there, it's... As I say, the wall is too plain. There's too much blank surface of wall there. Sort of see it when I jump in. But uh, I, I lowered the roof in the corner and replaced it with a corner roof piece instead, just to make that a little bit more interesting. Just again, to stop that being such a big blank surface, because putting decoration up that high didn't look right either. So I'm going to dump a sleeping bag on the bed, because you need some kind of covers. That's more or less the inside done. A little bit of lighting to add, which I went for a couple of desk lamps for that. I want something that's not overly bright, but there's a little bit of warmth to it. At least that's the way I usually go. With the exception of the kitchen, of course, which needs to look clean. Here we're going to get Here, rather, we're going to put some vendors out. And I'm trying to make sure that the sign on the right there tucks slightly behind the vendor to the right of it. Just so that I can squeeze them in a little bit more tightly. Not perfect, but... Follows the edge nice and neat. There we go. And we need the workbenches in now. So my first thought was to use this larger one, because I like the look a little better. And just set it there, but in a minute I'll change that, because it doesn't... It looks too bulky and like it's blocking up too much space, so we'll swap it out for the other one. Get a power armor station in. I did think putting this one here and being able to pass through the middle might be cool, but it doesn't... It just doesn't quite look right to my eye. So we're going to tweak that again. We'll ditch the chemistry station over here for the moment. Whip that tinker's bench out. And the power armor station can go at the back here. Again, I'm still not liking the way this particular power armor station looks. So we're going to swap it out. This yellow one is fine, but I've got the options to make it a little more interesting. So we're going to do that. Go with the responders one. Nudge in, make sure it's centered. You can use the fence place for that. And we'll put the workbench back in, which now looks too bulky for the space it's in. So we'll swap it out for the slightly spindlier version. There we go. Just looks slightly more pleasing to my eye, that one. Not much in it, and it takes up the same amount of space in reality, but I just like the look a little better. I'll get a few items around the workbenches here, just to make it look like more of a crafting area. Plus stash boxes. Put them at a bit of an angle, make it look a bit more organic. Yep, makes the place look a little bit more interesting. The one last thing I want to show you on the decoration phase is what I do when I'm wiring the place up. I generally don't like to have trailing wires all over my camp. It's fine if you do want to do that, and the right style of build it works well for, but for this one, I don't want that particular look. So I'm going to tuck some of these little power conduits up close to the corner of the roof there, try and make sure they're not trailing any more than we absolutely have to. Bit of an issue there, but... Here we're just going to go around the corner there, and along the top edge above the door here, a couple of them on the corner there, so that we can lead the wire around the corner. It just keeps it out of sight, out of the way, makes the whole thing look generally much tidier. Now I want to put a switch in here because I want to be able to turn the vendors off, particularly while I'm recording the video. So it's best if I don't have people turning up. It was a bit awkward, but we managed. <laughs> so, jumping on, let's have a little look around this finished product, shall we? A little bit of a sunset look, which does create a nice little lighting effect. We've got a couple of flashlight decorations on the front there. These signs. As per usual, I've gone for these oil lamps, which can be picked up in the White Spring if you can't find them anywhere else. It's probably your best bet, actually. Because they give a nice warm glow in the evening. Which is much nicer than some of the harsher lights we've got available in the middle menu. So you've got a fully decorated, lived-in look there. The wires are not too over the top. I've moved that uh, fire breather's shield, I suppose, again. 
a nice interesting shape. Gone for a wind turbine out here because I didn't want smaller generators all over the place but this one looks like a big unit that adds to the overall look of the place rather than something I have to work around. It's more of a feature piece. A few bits of corn in the garden now. Like a nice little Voltec flag out the front. I wish the flag base wasn't quite so obnoxious and we could sink it into the ground, but it is what it is. Little sitting area out on the patio. We'll have a look inside. Okay. The doors are from the Atomic Shop, but uh, they are one of my favourite ones to use. I do tend to add those last if humanly possible, just because they get in the way otherwise. You can't open them in build mode. As you see, I put a little doorway in here. Basically what I did was back two doors onto each other. You can snap two into the same place because we've got a foundation on either side. That way I can wallpaper it. The reason I did that is because the bright white light in the kitchen area, which is right for that area, spills through into the lounge area too much. We have decoration looking nice out here in the crafting area. And I didn't want that white light spilling into the sort of warmer light of the living room too much so putting a doorway in there cuts down on that somewhat but I didn't want to put a door in because it's kind of in the way of the staircase so we left it without a door yeah you know, see our little vending area I've got everything switched off I moved the switch around just to make it a little bit more accessible swing back in and a lot of the more obscure bits and pieces in the decoration here are from the Atomic Shop, but you can mix and match and do whatever you like with them. Design it your own way. A few fast snack masks on display there. Nice warming look. A few more lamps scattered around just to bring the lighting level up a little bit, but not too much as you'll see when we have a wander around in the dark in a minute. A little corn out here because that's all I had available at the time. <laughs> But corn soup is a nice handy way to keep yourself fed and watered, so not a bad plan. Take a little look upstairs. There you go, you can see where I've dropped the roof in the corner there a little bit, which makes it a little bit more interesting to look at as well. You missed the fuzzies in the display there. Got to expand my bobblehead collection a bit. Nice little welcoming bedroom. Bit of an open plan feel. Plenty of furniture, plenty of lighting. Take a little look out onto the balcony. Nice view of the lower forest region here. A little space to sit and chill out if you so desire. Apparently we got feral ghouls coming down that hill, so not such a bad idea to have somewhere to stand and shoot from either. There we go, another close look at that corner ceiling piece that I put in, the roof piece there. Just to change the shape a little bit and to have less exposed wall area there. Well, it's wondering about the build budget, by the way, on this. There's absolutely loads left over. There's got to be at least a third of my build budget left by the time I finish this. So should be manageable for anybody, this build. So the decoration will be varying depending on what plans you have available. If you're new to the game, you might not have so many options, but... You can build them up over time, and taking a look around player camps is a fantastic way to get more plans and options at, frankly, bargain prices, so I strongly recommend doing that. Yeah, pretty pleased with how this reasonably permanent player home came out. So I've done my uh, easy-to-move camp builds. This one is going absolutely nowhere, but I do like the look of it. <laughs> if you want somewhere a little long more, if you want somewhere a little more long term, this should work quite nicely. Have a little swing around in the evening, get a little look at that lighting. Nice, warm and welcoming. You can really see the crafting area and the vendors quite clearly. But the green light's not too obnoxious with plenty of orange light around it. I do like the way the overhangs work on this as well. It creates a nice little effect and look to it. I only put the one water purifier here, which is enough to keep you topped up, but I didn't want too much in the way of power generators, as I said earlier. The more 
bending and water purifiers, things like that you put, the more you've got to have an obnoxious number of generators, and one is quite enough and quite loud enough, to be honest, so. As we'll see in just a moment, I had to top up the power quota with some small generators, so if you get the chance to grab the Voltaic generators from the Atomic Shop when they come around again, I would strongly recommend doing so, as they're actually silent, so that's nice to have. See, it's quite dim in here. I would have liked to have an option to lift the lighting level a bit more. But the struggle with that is you often get kind of too much. It's either too much or too little, so... I settled on too little as it being a bit more atmospheric. You can see what I mean about the kitchen being much brighter. Which makes sense, but you don't want it spilling through into the lounge area too much. Did simple little bit of decoration around the power armor station and the weapons workbench there, but I really like the way it looks. It's um, much more interesting. There's one of those Voltaic generators. Much more uh, complete looking, lived in, functional area in terms of its appearance and its vibe. So, quite happy with how that's come out. Very, very warming evening light here. Those uh, oil lamp posts are brilliant for that. And if anybody should happen to see me on, I've usually got a lot of plans on cheap. So, stop by and pick a few up. Little look at the lighting upstairs, which I think I'm a little happier with, actually. So, nice low light in the bedroom, which is what you want. That particular standard lamp again, the Sonic Shop, and it's quite nice. It's quite bright, but not too bright. It's one of the objects that finds the best balance, I think. I do like the little desk lamp there. It doesn't put out a lot of light, but it's a nice little feature piece. So good addition. Should have had something to the left of the bed, really, there on the wall. But something I can think about in time, because we've got plenty of budget left. A little oil lamp out here to just cast a bit of light, but not too much. And there we go. So, much longer than usual, but I do hope you folks found that useful and informative. If you did, please do hit those buttons for me, so it's very, very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store, and channel memberships all down in the description if you're interested in such things. So please do join us over there. Thank you very much for that support. It's hugely appreciated. Do keep an eye out for one of the live streams as well, playing plenty of Fallout and a little bit of Baldur's Gate at the moment. We all usually have a B game on the go, so do drop in and join us there if you get the chance. For now, I'll say thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.